So a beautiful day here in Malibu. Uh, I just pulled over on the side of the road here on the PCH. Kind of noisy, but I'm trying to make something of the scene behind me. I'm not sure how I'm going to compose this. It could be a challenge, but I do like the idea of having the trees in the foreground superimposed over those distant headlands. I am painting on a 16 by 20 inch panel today, and I've got my usual limited palette here of phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, lizard crimson, burnt sienna, titanium white, and cadmium yellow medium. I also have some cadmium yellow lemon from a previous painting and some permanent red medium also from a previous painting. All right, I'm sketching in burnt sienna, just trying to get the big shapes in place. I feel like the placement of the trees is really important. I'm gonna do my best to try to talk when cars aren't going by, but uh, I can't promise. <laughs> I think it's gonna be kind of noisy, but this is a scene that I've driven by many times and I've wanted to paint it and I thought I would share the process with you guys. I've placed the land about a third of the way down from the top and there are some houses down here like this. Uh, mostly just rooftops but it'll be nice because uh, they have terracotta tile roofs and so I'm hoping that the orange of the terracotta will play off of the the blue of the ocean but that's basically the composition right there and there is a whitewater pattern that will be a key part of the composition as well one of the big challenges with a composition like this is having these trees superimposed over the scene Okay, I'm starting with a dark mixture of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson and a touch of burnt sienna. And I wanna make sure that these tree trunks aren't all the same. I also wanna make sure that the tree tops are not all lined up as well. In fact, I think I'll have this palm running right off of the top. Actually, it's two palms together, but I'll have them a little bit higher. I move these palms over into the composition just because it felt a little bit unbalanced just having this whole open area here. And doing the same thing here, making sure that these trunks are sort of irregular. So there's the tree placement. I feel like I want maybe this tree here to come out a bit more maybe have this part go up higher sort of like that could be nice to have some big leaves coming off like that All right, for the distant land, I've got a mixture of ultramarine and titanium white. And I'm just estimating values at this point. I wanna make sure that these distant hills are light enough in value that they recede into the distance. All right, I've mixed up a green here using ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow medium, and a bit of alizarin crimson. There's some dark plants in the foreground. I'm gonna quickly sketch them in. See, there's one here kind of separating these two buildings. I just added a bit more cadmium yellow medium to lighten up and warm up the mix a bit. Squinting at the scene to simplify the shapes. Just looking for big shapes at this point. Learning to see in terms of shapes is so important and yet it's so challenging. But in order to paint a complicated scene like this, you really do have to break it down into simple shapes. This group of plants down here is a simple shape. The ocean, the white water, the sky, those are all simple shapes as well. All right, for the sky, I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue, titanium white, and phthalo blue. I've kind of lost the sun here. It's sort of more of an overcast now, but I am going to stick with the sunny lighting condition that I started with. And I think I can remember well enough to finish the painting. When I paint in plein air, I am using the scene as inspiration, but I'm not painting it exactly as I see it. I 
I'm not afraid to move things around or change the lighting if necessary, change colors, saturation, that sort of thing. It helps that I've done a lot of plein air paintings. It's not that hard to imagine, say, a sunny lighting situation. All right, for the water, I'm going with a gray-green mixture that I made using ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, titanium white, and I added some burnt sienna to sort of gray down the mixture and push it a bit towards green. And there's quite a bit of white water in the ocean. I want the edges of the white water to be somewhat irregular. Already using the negative space of the ocean to kind of carve out the positive shape of these trees. I'm using a fairly big brush. It's a number eight natural bristle flat. Just trying to block in the general idea here. And I think I want the white water to come down at more of an angle so that there isn't any white water over in the corner. I don't like to have bright bits at the edge to draw the eye. All right, so for the white water and the distant beach, I'm using a light purple mix. And I made this mix using ultramarine blue, titanium white, and grayed it down a bit with burnt sienna. And this is just a starting point as well. I will be adjusting this color. And there will be some light bits out in the distance, breaking waves, etc. But just trying to get those big shapes in place. All right, so for the rooftops, I'm starting with a mixture of cadmium yellow medium, permanent red medium, titanium white, and I'm graying down the mix a little bit with some uh, ultramarine blue. The rooftop values and colors do vary a bit, but for now, I'm just going to block them in all the same color and value. And I do plan to keep this painting pretty loose. I'm just gonna suggest the details and let the viewer's imagination fill in the blanks. For the sides and the front of the houses, going with a warm gray to start out with. Again, just focusing on shapes. The buildings are light in value and there's quite a bit of reflected light, so I don't want to paint them too dark. All right, so now I've switched over to a number six natural bristle flat and I'm applying thicker paint at this point kind of defining some of the shapes. Just focusing on having fun here. I have no idea whether this painting is gonna work out or not. I never really do. And I don't worry about it because I feel like the exploration is really enjoyable. And there's a dark edge to this roof line right here. And a bit of a dark edge to the top as well. And the front of it slopes like that. We'll put a dark edge on this roof here too. If these doors or any windows that I put in don't work, I'll just uh, I'll just change them. And there's a window right here. And maybe I'll add a window here, window here, something like that. And I was thinning with liquid, but at this point I'm just applying thick paint straight out of the tube as far as thickness goes, not thinning at all. During the initial scrub in, I'm scrubbing a lot and kind of searching, making sure the shapes are in place. But now that I've got the shapes where I want them, I'm applying confident loaded strokes. I do like to have areas of thick and thin, so I'm gonna to try to leave some of the scrub in. I'm pushing the shadow portion of the building more towards a purplish color. It can be a real challenge to get the values right when you have a light building in shadow. But you can just keep trying until you get it right. It's a nice thing about oil painting. When I'm painting a scene like this, I'm not trying to do a photographic representation. What I'm looking for is a feeling of joy. It's hard to describe, but that's something that paint can do. 
is the texture of the paint, the color, all of that contributes to giving you a sort of joyful feeling when you look at the painting. I think you all as painters know what I'm talking about. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. All right, so here is what I finished up with. This painting took about two hours to complete. It was finished on site. The goal with this painting was just to have fun and experiment and see if I could get this composition to work. I decided to push the color and then also push the texture. So I exaggerated color and then I also used thick loaded strokes and tried to apply those strokes with intention. I wanted to have a sense of joy in this painting. It's not a literal representation of the scene, but it does give me a feeling of joy when I look at it, and so therefore I'm happy with it. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos, and it's much appreciated, so check it out. Other than that, stay creative. I'll see you guys in the next video.